and what i'm going to do is kind of speak through the mental model that we want to follow in terms of imagining what the cpu is or how it looks and how its interaction with the memory is and what kind of computation it performs and in what fashion right so let's just start off by considering that this is our cpu and then let's say we have the memory here uh, and this memory can have instructions and it can have data the idea would be that you know the instructions are fetched from this area and the, the computation is performed uh, on the data that is saved in this area uh, now the 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 imagination in terms of cpu and memory interaction that we want to follow is based on something called the risk architecture um, and the risk architecture essentially is a load and store architecture and what that essentially means is any computation that we want to perform on the data the data must be first fetched into the cpu the calculation needs to be performed on that and then that modified data is to be you know sent back to the memory so this operation here is the load and this operation here is the store so this is one thing that we are going to kind of you know keep in mind and latch on to essentially and the other thing is okay this data is being loaded but loaded where so the imagination for the cpu as an embedded software engineer that we would want to have is that the cpu is you know made up of registers uh, something called gpr general purpose registers and there are certain other registers that kind of you know capture uh, the status and the configuration right so what i mean by status and configuration is let's say you know for, first off when we load the data the data would be then loaded into you know the registers and let's say we call them like you know r0 through rn uh, so that's like uh, you know the numbering of the registers and let's say the computation needs to be performed on r0 and r2 so the uh, let's say we perform like a subtraction like right? these are fed into the alu and the subtraction is performed and the answer of that subtraction is also put back into some register let's say r4 for whatever reasons right and the way we control which register to read which register to write uh, has to do with the instructions right the code essentially but let's assume uh, r0 minus r2 uh, and r4 gets the result this is the computation being performed then the status register will capture was the result negative did we have an overflow uh, you know did did we kind of um, generate a negative number was a zero generated those kind of things are latched or stored in the status registers and sometimes you know the cpu can operate in many different privilege modes and things of those nature those kind of features are controlled by the config registers a uh, long story short the cpu can be imagined to be a bunch of registers some of which are the general purpose registers and some of which are status and configuration registers and the key idea so that we are going to use over and over again is that the data needs to be fetched into the cpu first like in r0 and r2 registers computation needs to be performed and then the answer which was let's say stored in r4 register needs to be stored back to the memory so that is the model that we'll follow um, and you'll see that you know we keep on reusing and revisiting this mental model so it's like super super important